Welcome back to the gallery of the Austrian Cultural Forum. I'm very happy that we can open the exhibition Spaces of No Control, an exhibition uh, which when we planned it, some, we started planning it some two years ago, uh, was born out of the idea that uh, urban spaces uh, are changing that we are facing uh, a change in what investors, uh, what surveillance uh, is doing with public space. Well, in the meantime, uh, since March of this year, no one could have expected uh, what changes we are just facing now and uh, in which tremendous way uh, this exhibition matches to what we see uh, right now and what we will see presumably in the near future. Uh, I would like to thank first of all all the participating artists uh, who contributed to this exhibition in very challenging times. Thank you Sabine Bieter, Helmut Weber, Tony Cox, Valley Export, Hans Hake, Francis Reuter, Taryn Simon and Kai Valkowiak. Uh, many thanks to Walter Seidel who curated Spaces of No Control and uh, to our supporters in Austria and in New York City, the Austrian Federal Ministry for Arts, Culture, Civil Service and Sports uh, and the Gagosian Gallery. As I said, we are back to the real world. Uh, the exhibition is open. Come to pay us a visit. Welcome to the virtual opening of the exhibition Spaces of No Control at the Austrian Cultural Forum in New York. I'm the curator of this show and I just want to briefly introduce the concept of the show. Uh, over the past decades, public space has always been a contested space, a space that allows access to only a few, access sometimes only to the privileged, or sometimes access to all. So what you have in cities is basically the power, the power of the state or the power of capital. Capital that interferes, capital that rules. And the artists in this exhibition are trying to deal with these topics of how you deal with the public, how citizens interact in public, and how also art in public space can function as a device that makes us aware of things, how cities change, how cities develop, and how people react and interact. At this point, I really want to thank the whole team of the Austrian Cultural Forum, the director, Michael Heider, the installing team, and first and foremost, of course, the artists who were willing to contribute to this show under this pandemic times and trying to set up the exhibition from a distance. Thank you. Minimal vandalism is a piece that playfully challenges the rules and restrictions that most of the times are still there in spaces dedicated to display visual arts. Traditionally, there's a certain way we should approach uh, pieces of art in a rather religious way to appreciate them in silence and reflect um, upon them in a very meditative way. In my piece, I turned these rules upside down what we can see is a typical white cube exhibition space with a post-minimalist installation set up. Next, we see Kieran Martin coming into play as a professional skateboarder, and he is approaching the objects in a rather different way. He is using them, misusing them, placing them, misplacing them in the way that he can apply his own arts of skateboarding in the space. And now the whole space gets transformed itself as well. The white cube that was bound by a set of rules literally becomes a space of no control. And now something interesting happens. These objects that were sitting in space just in silence suddenly become alive. We can hear different sounds of scratching, of rubbing, of bumping and we can really get a feeling about the material and physical conditions of the objects themselves. So the space 
becomes a beautiful stage now for a play of unlimited possibilities. Our collaborative work is often informed by different concepts of public space and also by the question of what the public within this term of public space actually could mean. For our new work entitled Park Avenue Plaza, Performing Publicness, we looked at the history of public space in New York City. Because when we talk about public space, we still continue to think of space as it would be clearly marked as either private, as corporate, or as public, which is really not the case anymore. Because already in the 60s, the so-called pubs, privately owned public spaces, exist in New York City. It's a city famous for that. And they were invented to give real estate developers a good deal in regards to zoning regulations. And during our research in the spring, we came across one of these pops in the very close vicinity neighborhood uh, of the Austrian Cultural Forum in Midtown. It's called the Park Avenue Plaza. And it's also the building with the headquarter of the asset management group BlackRock. At the Cultural Forum, we installed two jacquard woven curtains based on black and white photographs of this plaza we made during that visit. This particular jacquard weaving process generates on one side a positive, on the other side a negative image of the space. Photographically speaking, the woven object collapses both views into one object. The curtains do not create a really fixed space, they make more a fluid or open one. And between the two curtains, you will find a sheet of instructions mounted onto the gallery wall. With those instructions, we invite the audience to visit Park Avenue Plaza. So therefore, we think or imagine that you, the audience, will be producing a public space. The body clearly takes a position between me and the world. On the one hand, this body is the center of my world, and on the other, it is the object in the world of the others. Richard Lang, The Divided Self. Hi, Francis Ryder here, tuning in from Vienna. Thank you for coming to our opening. Um, thank you to the Austrian Cultural Forum for hosting this exhibition and to Walter Seidel for including me in the context of so many great artists. I have been using the Farm Security Administration Office of War Information Archive at the Library of Congress to find pictures to use as source material for my work since 2009 after the financial crisis when I saw the difference between how an ordinary person in America uh, fared versus uh, somebody living here in Austria. 
since then, I found myself thinking often about the work I was making in the early 90s, which was also made using an archive of images and appropriation as a representational form, something which has changed in meaning dramatically in these last 30 years, appropriation that is. Um, back then, I would outline pictures that interested me in different ways to break down the hierarchy of the various representational methods behind them. That is what you see in the wallpaper behind the paintings. These particular paintings bring together things I have been thinking about, representation as always, archives and collections as early forms of artificial intelligence, the simultaneous neutralization of spaces just as they become viable as opportunities for individual expression, the way pictures move through time and various forms of mediation and the way narratives related to those pictures might have an entirely separate life. I used the search term machine to find the source photographs behind these paintings. The captions or descriptions of the original photographer became the titles of the works. I used a simple Photoshop filter called Cutout, which tries to imagine dimensional space of an image to process those pictures. The marks that fit are from watercolor and gouache pictures that I've made over the years to help me keep my focus. In uh, 1988, uh, it was the 50th anniversary, so to speak, of the annexation of uh, Austria with Germany, under Hitler, of course. I saw uh, a photograph of what happened uh, at the, uh, uh, the square uh, that you see here, and it really struck me, and uh, I uh, did uh, some research uh, about it uh, in, in the local uh, 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 archives and then came up with the idea to reconstruct uh, the uh, covering up of the Virgin Mary as the Nazis did in uh, 1938. Uh, and uh, as you see, the, uh, the, uh, the celebration of the Nazis was, and you were uh, victorious after all, referring to a, a failed Putsch that uh, they had done uh, four years earlier, and now they were celebrating uh, the victory. And I uh, uh, then added the bottom line, uh, namely those who were uh, uh, killed on the way to commemorate uh, uh, the cost of the victory. It is uh, very troubling that we are going through a period, again, uh, all over the world, uh, where things of this nature are, in fact, not unusual. And I'm afraid it, uh, it could get worse. For one, I, I can only hope that my fears will uh, turn out not to be uh, uh, justified and that uh, uh, people will recognize what it means to be uh, uh, human and uh, uh, even uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not uh, 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 I'm an atheist, but I would say, well, the, 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 the old uh, story of uh, uh, love your neighbor uh, like yourself uh, of the Bible uh, is still pertinent today. <laughs>